Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Nicole Murphy, co-founder of ncbloggernetwork.com and blogger for Mom Complicated. Welcome to Blogging 411, where we talk every Wednesday night from 8 to 8.30 about blogging. <laughs> I would like to let my fellow co-hosts introduce themselves quickly and then we're going to dive into our topic tonight because 30 minutes is definitely not long enough to cover what we are going to cover. Allison, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello everyone, happy Wednesday. I'm Allison Carter. I am a freelance writer, content strategist, been blogging for about five years. I too am a co-founder of NC Blogger Network and I have my own website, allisonbcarter.com. That's Allison with two L's and an I. Nice. And I am Randy Brown. I am a webmaster, sorry Nicole, webmaster and a blogger. And now for our fabulous guest tonight, Cynthia Sanchez from Oh So Pinteresting. Hi guys, so great to be here. I am, like you said, Cynthia from Oh So Pinteresting. I have been writing and blogging and podcasting about Pinterest for almost two and a half years now, actually over two and a half years now. Wow, time flies. Um, all about how to use Pinterest for business and as a marketing tool. So thank you so much for having me on tonight. Really looking forward to it. So I am just so excited that we are having this talk because number one, it I thought I knew a little bit about Pinterest, but apparently I don't know really that much at all. So I'm really excited to have you here to explain the basics um, and how they relate to bloggers and kind of set the, the record straight was I've been telling telling people that you can't change the names of your boards, which is not correct. Um, <laughs> and to talk about the new messenger feature, which looks really, really exciting. Um, so number one, I would love to talk about just the top three no-nos that you see or just common mistakes. Um, maybe, you know, not that they're offensive, but maybe if a newbie on Pinterest um, that you see a lot of newbies make. Yeah, you know, there's some mistakes that I see newbies make, some mistakes that I see big brands make, so mistakes are just kind of all over the place, and there's some really simple ways to avoid them. Actually, the big mistake that I just saw, just actually a few minutes before we jumped onto the call tonight, was from a big national publication. Everybody and their mother read this magazine growing up at some point in their life, okay, and they have a big Pinterest account, and what they did is they pretty much spammed their followers. They had about 30, 40 pins that all looked the same. They were all just these individual products with white background, just one after one pin after the other, after the other, after the other. It's like the same stuff. It's like, oh, please don't do that. So if you're on Pinterest and you really want to be kind to your followers, which you should do if you want them to continue to follow you, um, avoid doing that. So avoid getting on there and pinning, you know, pin after pin after pin, especially about one single topic. Um, so let's say for bloggers, you know, maybe they have a blogging tips board somewhere on their account, or if they're a food blogger, they have, you know, a special kind of recipe. You know, let's take food bloggers. I don't know. I always pick food bloggers. Um, <laughs> I'm always hungry. I like food a lot. Um, <laughs> um, you know, so let's say maybe they're they're looking up chicken recipes or, or wanting to feature chicken recipes or something that day, and they pin 25 chicken recipes one right after the other. And you know, for their followers, if they're not following many accounts and if they're pinning those pins really really quickly, um, that could be really annoying. Um, there was actually a blogger that I followed, well, not quite two years ago, about a year and a half ago, and she had an amazing website, a wait, an amazing blog. Uh, the style was beautiful. You could tell she had a lot of help from designers. She high production, great content, but she would pin the same image over and over and over and over again when she wrote a blog post or came out with a new video. I had to stop following her because when you think about it, people really um, like to use Pinterest on their mobile devices, mostly cell phones. Over 75% of the traffic going to Pinterest happens on a mobile device. And when I'm looking at this teeny tiny little screen and I see that same picture over and over and over again, that's pretty darn annoying, you know, so don't annoy your followers that way. So that's one thing. Can I jump sure. in with a question related to that really quick? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so as a blogger, I want to pin my article, like my own stuff that I write to my boards, correct? Mm -hmm, for sure. And 
there, I've heard some some conflicting information about whether or not you should just pin your post once to one of your boards, or if you need to put that same post on multiple different boards that you own. Because you know, sometimes on Pinterest, people can follow you and everything you pin, or they can just pick specific boards of yours that you follow. If you didn't know that about Pinterest, that's really key, I think, to understand. So you know, you might have some followers who will just follow one or two specific boards that you've created that they're interested in. So since Cynthia, does it make sense for me then to like take a post that I've written and pin it to a, I mean all topic appropriate, but pin it to a couple different boards or should I just pin it to one of my boards and then let that be? Because I think the spamminess happens when you're trying to like get it into all your relevant topics mm -hmm. so that everybody can see it. Exactly, um, and, and I think it's a great idea to pin to multiple boards, but just don't do it all at the same time. You're kind of doing a disservice to your followers if they do follow your entire account, and also to yourself, um, because as Pinterest has grown in popularity, people are following you know hundreds, if not thousands, of other pinners sometimes. Um, so when you pin, you know, let's say you pin your 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 um, article at two in the afternoon. Well, a lot of your followers aren't going to be on Pinterest at two in the afternoon, and if they're following that many accounts, chances are they're not going to scroll all the way back in the feed to find you know where they left off. Back when I first started Pinterest, I could do that. I mean, that's you know you could you could go that far back, but not anymore. I mean, you're just following too many people, and people are more active. Um, so if you want to pin it to another board or have another you know appropriate board to pin it to, wait till later in the day. Wait till the next day. Wait a few weeks. Come back and repin it again to that that same board you started off with. There isn't any reason that you can't go back and re-promote that content. Um, in fact, one of my the things that I, I really advise people to do is go back into your archives and those those evergreen kind of posts that you have that would be applicable whenever um, or are still relevant. Go ahead and re-pin them again because in that time you've gained new followers. You know, maybe you missed them back then. And I've had new posts just or you know even podcast episodes just take on a new life when I do that. So I, I think it's a really good idea to re-pin things to, to multiple boards. Okay, okay no, I have a question, <laughs> sorry, haha, -ha, um, for Allison and Cynthia. So I had a great um, post about Disney, and it was a guest blogger on our, our blog, and it went, it did really well, and that is just, you know, it's always topical, it's always, um, and it's, it's pretty evergreen as far as, you know, within that year, like, we could talk about it several different times, and it's still going to be okay. So I went ahead and made a different image so that when I pinned it, it did look different. Mm -hmm. But then I just kind of awkwardly stuck the new image at the bottom of the post because I, I didn't know what to do because I've been making my images like six by nine, 600 by 900. So I, both of you, you know, and somebody that knows how to repurpose con content correctly and then somebody, you know, a Pinterest expert, how do you mesh those two things together so it doesn't look, like there's just a giant image at the bottom of my post now. Um, you know, that's, that's actually something I've seen bloggers really start to do lately. Um, something similar. Well, they'll put one pinnable image up at the top and then maybe another just a little bit different down at the bottom. I think if, if you do want to go back to those older posts, try to keep some of the style and elements that you used in that original image into the new image. You know, maybe the same fonts, the same colors, maybe another image that you used in the post and, you know, make it larger, you know, repurpose it for, for Pinterest. Um, because for me, as if, and I'm sure it would be for you too. If you're on Pinterest and you see, let's say, um, you know, we'll talk about Disney, maybe, you know, the picture of, you know, the Cinderella's castle and, you know, some text over it and all that kind of stuff. Yes, that's Disney. And then I go to the blog post about it and it's a picture of one of Disney's restaurants that I don't quite recognize or that's just a little bit off. It's, uh, I'm going to get kind of confused, like, whoa, did this take me to the right article? Is this a bad link? Is this spam? It, it's just a little bit of confusion there. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it somewhat consistent, you know, at least some of the same elements, I think that's a great idea, something to do. Okay, so now I have a question. So, not being very familiar with Pinterest, um, as a blogger, my or as a webmaster as well, my one of my main goals is to drive traffic to my website. So, how effective is Pinterest at driving traffic to the website, and and does it work for every website, or can it work for every website? Who's who's the audience that's using Pinterest mainly, I guess, and, and how effective can it be for driving traffic? 
Yeah, Pinterest is amazing for driving traffic. Pinterest drives more traffic than like Google Plus and YouTube and LinkedIn combined, all sorts of different sites combined. I mean, that's been going on since 2013. It is huge for traffic. It has made businesses become the businesses they are. You know, they didn't exist a couple of years ago, but because of Pinterest, they are now businesses because they got so much traffic and attention from Pinterest. Um, and that does it does kind of go back to. Um, to who your audience is for the website that you're trying to promote. If you're trying to attract, I don't know, Allison, we're talking about engineers, you know, and you know, maybe in the in the green environmental space. Well, you know, if you're trying to attract those, you know, that really high specific of a technical field, you might not want to go to Pinterest to drive traffic to that space. Um, the primary user of Pinterest in the US is women in their mid to early 20s to their late mid 40s um, and that's the biggest user of Pinterest globally um, internationally Pinterest the the demographic is a little bit more 50 50 in the UK it's split down the middle almost leaning a little bit towards more men using Pinterest um, but in other parts of Europe it, it is more women so it really depends on who you're trying to reach and where you're at um, so Pinterest is great for driving traffic but there are other reasons that you can use it as a business too but if your main goal is for traffic then you know, definitely take a look and see um, who's out there. You know, if you're trying to reach women, um, and and you know, for most businesses, you know, you see my dog back there. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, for most businesses, you know, you know, it, it the rule still applies that women do make most of the purchasing decisions in a household. Um, so that's always something to consider. You might have to tweak your 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 message a little bit to reach those women, but we're always, you know, I know I'm always looking for stuff for my husband, for my son, for my brother, for my dad. You know, all those kinds of people. Um, so so definitely keep that in mind. So for my also monster read, um, four by four truck website, it might not be the best. That would be awesome. No, you should still do that on Pinterest. Yep. Um, and because you and you know another thing I kind of bring up with this is that you may not get that much direct traffic from Pinterest, but especially if you're in one of those high interest areas, Pinterest is all about interest, so you will get some attention that way. Um, but what it's really good for and has been really powerful for some businesses is to is for Google ranking. So if you're in one of those competitive niches and you're having a hard time bringing up your Google ranking, you may not be able to rank for those keywords straight from your website, but maybe your Pinterest boards can. Um, there are multiple businesses that I've come across, blogs that I've come across where um, you know their, their blog or their website doesn't really rank really high, but one of their Pinterest boards will. One of my Pinterest boards usually ranks number one or two in the crafting space. I don't have anything to do with crafting, but one of my boards does. Um, there's a business in California, one of their Pinterest boards, it's a remodeling business, their business ranks number one for their city name slash remodeling. Um, you know, right underneath the paid ads, it's their Pinterest board that ranks first, not another business. So, um, so you could get traffic in different ways. All right, so Allison, one last question, then I'll let you talk. Um, <laughs> so as somebody that, again, isn't familiar with it, what, what's, the, what's the high level, how do you use it? How do you use Pinterest? If I want to come in, I want to start promoting one of my new websites, mm -hmm. what do I do? You think of Pinterest as another search engine. Think of SEO. Keep SEO in mind when it comes there. What are people searching for? What do they want to find? What are those keyword phrases that they're going to use? What are the topics that my business is about? Those, those topics, those, um, I guess, kind of tags that you would put on your blog post can also be then translated into Pinterest boards. Um, so that, that's kind of where you start off with. And you really so you have make to a board about a subject or a mm -hmm. keyword or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. And then, and then you start posting blog posts like I would share on Twitter or on Facebook or I post images or I do both or neither so all the images, well not all the images, but a majority, I'd say 95 to 97% of all the images on Pinterest are links out to websites, out to blogs, out to product images on e-commerce sites. Um, so you would have to have images on your website to go to each one of those places you want to bring attention to. You then pin those websites to a board, whichever category they fall in. Think of the boards as kind of like drawers or file cabinets that you can then file them and organize them into. Um, you, would not want, you would want to not only pin your own content, but you would also want to bring up the popularity of those boards into your overall account by pinning other people's content related to that same topic. So we'll go back to 4 by 4 trucks. Let's say we have wheels, okay? So you you know you write an article about how to choose the best wheels and what to look for that and whatever. So you pin your own blog post about it, but then maybe you pin some other, you know, maybe a guy who that's what he does professionally. He goes off-roading and he has, you know, a blog post about wheels or, you know, an article somewhere. Then you pin that there as well. So you build that board to a nice resource about 
off-roading wheels for your followers. All of those links, all of those um, keywords, all those tags, everything that's in there, Google recognizes, and that can that's, I think, how it all works together to help boost that Google ranking. And also discoverability on, on Pinterest as well. So, sorry, Allison. So, Randy, for your salt and sea, um, so Randy has this really cool project that he's doing in June of 2015, and he's going to be walking around the salt and sea, and he's giving a lot of um, uh, exposure and media exposure. So, for that, like you could create boards, and you can also invite people to post on those boards, to pin on those boards. They're called collaboration boards. So then, other people can post as well there. So you can set, you know. So then, that even drives things up more. And then you're not doing all the work yourself. And so I just wanted to throw okay. that in there. Yeah, definitely. Those group boards are awesome. Allison, you may. Speak. All right, your turn, Allison. <laughs> Thank you. I forget what I was going to say. No, I certainly don't. That's what I um, well, one of the things that I think, and this might lead us into sort of the next topic to talk about, uh, is that well, you can't just post any old image out of your blog post just to get it on Pinterest. And the reason why businesses do really well on Pinterest is because they create images where a consumer looks at that image and says, oh my god, I could see myself wearing that that." those shoes or I could see myself laying in that duvet cover or and that or you know I can see myself in that four by four mm -hmm. and that is the thing that you have to understand about Pinterest is that it, it works so well because it's visual and we emotionally as human beings respond to visual so much more than we respond to text and so one of the things I'd like to hear from Cynthia and I know I think we're still stuck on number one of three not to do <laughs> but um, I would like to hear at some point too the what to do like what are the sort of images that that do really well. I mean, I'm seeing so much now of like text on images, right? So that I can just see the image on Pinterest and know exactly what it's about without even having to read the little caption underneath now. Um, you know, do you watermark it with your name on it? You know, all those sorts of little tips and tricks about what to do to make an inter uh, image play on Pinterest a little more. Okay, that's like a whole another hour conversation, but we can kind of skim over the surface. Basically, you, you kind of said a, a big point there. You're starting to see images where you're, you can tell everything that it's about just by looking at that image on Pinterest. Keep in mind that you are competing with all of these other images to grab people's attention. And so let's say, let's go back to um, you know the off-roading type of topic, and you have a picture of a truck. Well, okay, there's a truck. Is it how to buy the truck? Is it where to drive the truck? Is it about the wheels. What's it about? Is it you know? I, I don't know because we don't have the benefit of the entire website or or the blog post title just blaring at us there, you know, or whatever. Um, so those text overlays can be really, really helpful in guiding people to understand what that image is trying to communicate. And if your blog happens to be about something that isn't quite so visual, you know, that's maybe a little bit more service based, that's where it really becomes important. Today I saw you know an image of you know somebody reaching out, you know, and the image like reaching out, you know, it's like well what the heck does that mean, you know? It's like, yeah, it's just some kind of creepy guy reaching out at me, and it actually ended up going to some sort of business, you know, site. And it made sense in the context of that blog, and, you know, but in, in it by itself, it doesn't make sense at all. So, um, like you said, people have to read the description underneath, and that's requiring more work. And you know, we know people anything to make it easier to get to you. That's what you want to do. Just make it as easy as possible. Um, and as far as watermarking the images, I definitely highly, highly recommend doing that with your URL, with your logo, with something that will help people start to recognize your blog's name, how to get back to you, who you are, what you're about, that type of thing. Um, and also, there are some not so great, nice people out there on Pinterest. They will go and scrape all of the images off Pinterest and then re-put them up there for their own evil use. Um, they will send you to spam sites and they will do whatever. I haven't seen that happen with any of my images, but I know they're out there. I saw a crazy YouTube video about somebody actually telling people to avoid branded or watermarked images just for that purpose. You could go through, it was this kind of program you could buy and you could just click, 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 click on all the images, it would scrape the images and then change the links to their links. It's like, there are really people out there that do that? Kind of, kind of turn my stomach a little bit. But, you know, so if you do have a branded image, if something like that were to happen um, or if the link got broken or, you know, something changes down the line, then, you know, you have that little bit of, you know, connection back to your site. Is there an optimal size for the? Oh, sorry, I got in first. Is there an optimal size for the images to share, or does it matter? 
Um, it does matter. Really, it's more perspective, and you know, kind of you want more of a yeah, more um, you want more of a portrait style image where it's a tall image more than a landscape where it's really wide. Now, the actual size, once you get it into the Pinterest feed, it'll kind of expand to fill into the feed. Every image gets the same width, but the lengths can vary up to about 1300 pixels tall. After that, Pinterest will kind of hide the bottom until you click on it. So if you have a long infographic, if you have re the really important information or a really tall image, make sure that that's up towards the top if you have a really tall image. Um, but as far as the overall size, of course, it has to fit within your blog's layout, and everyone's is a little bit different. Um, so you want to make sure it fits within that. Um, but when you go into Pinterest and you click on an image and enlarge it, is that picture big enough to see the detail that I need to see? Uh, for example, I came across a, a, a company that does landscaping, and they had all these tons of little thumbnails all over their um, all over their site, and they pinned those thumbnails straight to Pinterest. So when I opened up the pin, or you know, clicked on the pin and enlarged it, it was this teeny tiny thumbnail of the landscaping thing. In the feed, it actually looked bigger, but when I got in there, I couldn't tell if that was a tree, a bush, a cat. I couldn't tell what it was, you know. Um, so it's like that didn't really help them. And of course, I just oh, I can't see what it is. I clicked away from it and went and pinned something else instead. So is the picture big enough to tell the detail that you know? that I need to see in it. So it doesn't need to be super huge all the time, but you know, just, just really get that message across quickly and easily. I had um, another question for you that I would love to hear your thoughts on. A lot of bloggers know that they need to pin their stuff, okay? And I've heard, mm -hmm. again, conflicting opinions about <laughs> do you pin your stuff to your own boards? Like you clearly label it like this is my blog's material and then you have other blogs so that people are clear if they're following that board that you're pinning your stuff. Or do you just mix it in with everything else like you would normally do with all of your other boards? So instead of having like my blog board and then here's stuff I pin from other people about topics, do you just kind of mix it all in there? I would do both. Okay. Um, and, and I know that's kind of kind of not the best answer, I guess. Well, actually, it is, because that's what you should do, I think. Is unless you're a brand new blogger. If you have two blog posts of your own and that's it, then I wouldn't recommend just creating a blog or a board just for your blog. Um, once you've got a good you know, kind of library built up behind you, then go ahead and do it and start bringing some attention back to that earlier content. But what that does is it really helps make a searchable index for your followers, for the people that follow you on Pinterest. For example, I have a board just of my old Pinterest news and tips, and then I have a board dedicated just to my podcast and then I have another board just to Pinterest tips and news that I pin my stuff and everybody else's stuff but when people are searching okay they found my podcast well what about all the rest of them so I'm kind of bringing up the old ones I didn't pin them all at once I, I'm up to like podcast episode 70 and I think on my board I have like 20 something podcasts pinned you know so I'm just kind of slowly bringing them out slowly bringing them out bringing attention to them one thing I would be careful though is not to name that board my blog posts or you know blog posts from XYZ blog or you know whatever it is because that's not searchable what is your blog about what are you telling what are you talking about what what would be you know we got to think of Pinterest as more of a search tool um, in that in that regard you know so name those those boards something that is searchable but still just has your content and then also pin them to the other one but going back to the first no no don't do it all at once pin them separately <laughs> So then I know Pinterest is also pushing um, a lot of bloggers really hard to become a business. Mm -hmm. And I know like on Facebook now we have, you know, your personal Facebook page and then you can have your separate blog fan page on mm -hmm. Facebook. And I feel as though Pinterest is kind of trying to push businesses to create business accounts and people to have personal accounts. Is that a correct read and kind of where is that going and how should I look at that as a blogger? Do I want a separate account for my blog? Yeah, if, if you're a blogger and you produce an income from your blog, if you want to follow IRS standards, you know, and whatever they have and your tax laws and all that kind of stuff, well, then you're a business, right? If you're out there to make money, whether it's affiliate links or selling your own products, you're a business. And according to Pinterest Terms of Service, if you're using that to promote whatever that business is, even if it's just, you know, maybe, you know, a, an ad system that you're running or something like that, then you should be using it as a business. And if you're not using a business account, and they could shut your account down. Um, so you would want to avoid that. Um, What's the difference between a personal and a business account? Do you have to pay for one, or you just create it differently? Um, you go to business.pinterest.com, and then you can convert that personal account into a business account with a couple of clicks of a mouse, changing a couple of you know little 
fill in boxes of business name and who the contact person is. You don't lose any followers um, and you get the benefit of analytics. Plus, um, just, just, just launching on Pinterest are promoted pins, which is advertising on Pinterest. Um, it's going to be a, a, a CPC model, a cost per click model of that. Um, they just came out this last week, so it's really exciting stuff. Um, but that's what the differences really are. You also get access to analytics, so you can kind of see what's going on with your Pinterest account, which you know images have been popular, which you know pins have been clicked on, that type of stuff. So, how excited are we about messages? Are we excited? Is it a big deal? I think it's a really big deal. I really, really do because that's one of the features that kind of was missing from Pinterest to make it more of a social network. You couldn't really have private conversations with anybody. Everything had to be very public or taken off onto Pinterest or onto, I mean, off of Pinterest onto Twitter or to Facebook. Um, so now having that private messaging, I think, is really going to help. And as bloggers, especially, I think for you know, if one of your readers has a question about your blog post, they they, they already found your pin on Pinterest, they could ask you a question right. Right then and there, and you can build that relationship up there. If you're kind of a, a service provider or a consultant of some sort, you can collaborate with your clients right there on Pinterest. Okay, here's this pin. This is what I think would look good in your living room, or you know, you're the wedding planner, you know, what, whoever it is that's working with clients in that kind of way. I think that could be really, really helpful for. Well, I right away, I'm um, working on an account with somebody else, and. She, this girl's brilliant. Like day one of messages, she was messaging the pins that she wanted to put on this business account from her personal account. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think. It's... I said, you know, here I am. I'm like test, test. You know. <laughs> and then I go on there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great use of it. Just, you know, obviously, yes, the conversation part is huge. But being able to toggle back and forth, you know, because you can't toggle back and forth between accounts, this way you can at least move pins where you want them to be so you have them ready. So I thought that was pretty, pretty brilliant. Yeah, that um, was. Yeah. So I have a question about etiquette. So this always comes up with, um, I think, I feel like this question comes up a lot with Twitter. Where it's like, do you thank people for repinning your pin? Do you talk to them about it? Do you just let it go? Like, you know, what what is? How does that all happen? And now with messages, you know, should you send them a message like, hey, thanks for you know really promoting my pin, or or what? Well, how does that all work? Yeah, so if you do have a business account, you can go into those analytics and you can see who has repinned your stuff for a certain time frame, which is kind of wonky. It's not the most sophisticated analytic system, but you can get some information off of it. So if you do see somebody has repinned something and you know um, you, t you know who that person is, so Nicole, if I saw you, it's like, oh my god, Nicole is awesome and she repinned my stuff. Oh my gosh, I gotta go say thank you to Nicole because I want her to follow me back, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, if you want to build that relationship, then yeah, go ahead and go in and to that pin, their pin of your content, and say, "Hey, Nicole, thanks for pinning. You know, if you have any questions or whatever, but engage in conversation, um, because if you go, if you see all, you know, this whole page full of pins, because you had an awesome image and it was an awesome blog post." Um, and you go in there and you start thanking everybody that has repinned that or pinned that from your site. Pinterest will shut you down after about three or four thank yous because okay. they'll say that you have spammy behavior. So you really you can do more, but you need to change up the wording because for a while there you could just kind of thanks for pinning, copy paste, thanks for pinning, you know, you know, and <laughs> of course that is kind of spammy. But uh, you know, you really want to say you know something you know that isn't just the re a repetitive message. But you know, it's it's not something that you have to do. Um, it's not something that people expect, really. But if you want to, you know, kind of build those relationships, if you find that you know an influential pinner, you know, somebody with a large following that you think is your target audience, um, you know, did you know that they did you a service because you know they just shared your content to however many hundreds or thousands of followers that they had, so they do deserve some thanks. Yeah, I actually went ahead and thanked a big person on Pinterest for repinning one of my articles, and she invited me to one of her group boards, and I was like, See? "Yeah." Oh, so yeah, and, you know, <laughs> kind of follows the same social media rules everywhere. Just act like a normal human being, exactly, and, and you should be okay. <laughs> That's for sure. I do want to add, I feel like, because I started on Pinterest back when it was just formed. I got a private invitation, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like over the past years, I've had to really 
change my thinking about what Pinterest is. I mean, it started out for me as my boards to pin activities that I wanted to do with my kids or around my house or like crafts or products I wanted to buy or if I was going to do a new room, I would pin like my mood board for my room. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, now it's become such a marketing tool as someone who actually has stuff I want to be seen and I have stuff that I want to share, it's become marketing. And now I, I almost get a little stressed when I go to my Pinterest boards because I'm like, oh my god, there's so many pins, I can't possibly do all these. Like I used to look at it as more like a checklist or mm -hmm. if I wanted to find information again, then I could do it. And I feel like what Pinterest originally started out for as me, as a person, is completely changed as Pinterest has grown and now I use it as a blogger. And I think, it, I, I don't know, Cynthia, I mean, is that accurate? Is this something that bloggers need to understand? Yeah, definitely, because once you're using Pinterest as a blogger, you're not using it for yourself anymore. It is a tool for your business and you're building that Pinterest account for your followers. What will they be interested in? What will catch their eye? What will be helpful to them? It's not about you so much anymore. You can still, especially if you are your business, like I am my business, my Pinterest account started off the same way and that's what really led me down this path to do what I do now. It's because it completely took over my life. You know, every other word at my mouth for so long, I mean, still is Pinterest. Uh, but, you know, so you'll see on my account, all of those personal boards have been pushed down to the bottom because that's not when it, that's not what's important. But I still every now and then will pin something to those things to show people what I'm interested in. And, yeah, I like to eat this and I want to go here and I've been there you know that kind of stuff but um, that's not what the focus is we just made a move we bought a new house so now I have all of these things that I'm going to Pinterest for but what I've done is put all of those types of personal things that I'm like pinning those 25 you know kitchens that I want to remodel you know on the on secret boards on private boards so my followers don't have to see that I don't have to open up a separate account for that I can just put that on secret boards and you know they don't care if I want my kitchen blue or green or polka dot nobody really cares what they want to know is how they can use Pinterest to bring traffic to their blog make money with it and you know take off to Fiji or something you know who knows what they want to do but uh, but yeah so I, I completely understand um, and, and it should still you know sometimes I feel that stress but I have to like you know what this is supposed to be fun and this is this is business time and then this is fun Pinterest time and then just kind of you know kind of put a little line there I guess I would say for everything because you can get so stressed if you listen to all the experts and every if you tried to do everything that every one of us um, says to do you know like I have an article that says these are the six things that you have to do every time you build a Google Plus post and, you know and then there here are the four things that you have to do when you're creating your article so that it pins properly and then it tweets nicely you know you go you're gonna make yourself nuts you so yeah. you know definitely just staying true to who you are and just kind of trying to enjoy it I mean Pinterest is Pinterest is a happy place don't let it <laughs> stress you out well, you convinced me. I'm I'm going to give it a try now for my newest website. So awesome. Report back how it turns out. Yeah, definitely. Let me know. Well, that's good. And I want to remind everyone, Cynthia actually has workshops and so much information. If you're new to Pinterest, Randy, hop onto her website. I'm not trying to be salesy, salesy or anything, but she has some great, great information. And check out her Pinterest boards because there's a lot of good information there. I. Usually, if I need to know something about Pinterest, I'm like, oh, what does Cynthia say? Um, so definitely, you know, there's some great, great tips. And all those podcasts while you're walking, you know, around that salt and sea, you can be listening to Pinterest. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Pinterest podcast. Excuse me. Yeah. But, um, Cynthia, I just wanted to say thank you so much once again for visiting us. And I hope that you'll join us for uh, Pinterest for Bloggers Part 2 because I know that we did not even scratch the surface on a lot of these things. And we would love to talk again. Yeah, I still got two more no-nos to go through, so i got to be back. <laughs> I know. Everyone's going to be frozen in fear until the next <laughs> Yes, what's next? What else should <laughs> I be doing? <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was great. Good. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week.